Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us for the Oils of the Bible class tonight. Um, Maria will be um, presenting everything that she's learned. She's an excellent teacher. I have uh, known her since 2007 when she was the vice principal and principal um, when my children were in high school. And um, I've been sharing oil since 2018. She's been sharing oil since 2020. And she's just a teacher by nature. So I hope you have something to write with and are able to sit back, relax, and enjoy this class. Thank you, Margie. That is a no pressure, right? Um, we'll see. No pressure. So, thank you all so much for coming in. Just a little bit about why this class. Um, I want to back up and just kind of tell you my oil story in two minutes or less. And basically, I was dealing with, hold on, I've got one in the waiting room again. Give me just a second. Hold that thought. There we go. I'll give her a second to connect. All right, so basically um, I have had Crohn's disease since I was 20 and I won't go through all the details. Some of you already know my story um, and some of you don't. Um, but in 2019, things with my Crohn's disease and the medicines that I had to take for it had come to a head and I had people all around me giving me suggestions of what I should do um, to help. And so when you're in a situation like that, it's easy to get defensive or just brush it off and say, nah, I've, I'm, I've got this, I'm doing what my doctor says and all these things. Well, one of the things that was mentioned to me was from Margie um, about, about the oils and about how much they could help me. And I would, yeah, that's nice. Okay, all right, no, thank you. Um, and then in December of 2019, I had to go to the Mayo Clinic. And the Mayo Clinic was a gift from God in that situation because I was able to get in um, within 10 days of calling, which is unheard of. Um, they switched me to a new doctor that I had already found her name online and was interested in her. And they started me using essential oils, which I was shocked because I had always thought that was doctor advice and then, you know, holistic wellness advice. But I've been able to combine those two worlds. So when I got home from the Mayo Clinic, I made my um, famous last words call and said, okay, Margie, let's do this. And we always laugh because we had our first meetup in the school parking lot. And so it looked a little, maybe like a little shady deal going on, but really we were just passing oils. How exciting is that? So that's kind of how I started my journey with the oils. And since then I have been able to take care of so many health issues. Um, and so that's why I felt led to teach this particular class, because I know in my heart that these oils are a gift from God. And what better time to look at that and focus on that than right now as we're going right into Christmas. And so thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you and for taking the time. And I have a lot of passages marked and have to do a little jumping back and forth. And this is a new one for me. So just bear with me and I will do my best. Before I forget, I do want to say, Carrie Sammons wrote this class, okay? This is not something that I wrote. And she has taught it many, many times and very, very well. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. But she was gracious to share this information. And I, I wanted to make sure that I give her credit where it's due because she put so much work into this and, and putting all the passages together and doing the research. Um, it's been so much fun learning from what she had done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen and we'll get jump right in. Come on. I'm gonna try that one more time. Okay. trying to get my Zoom buttons at the top out of the way so I can present. Okay. 
Okay. Now, are you guys able to see me or just the screen? Anybody? We can both see you and, and the screen. screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, I just want to double check. Okay, so oils of the Bible. Um, when I first started studying for this class, I actually read a book um, called The Healing Oils of the Bible, and I will reference that a little bit later on. Um, but one of the passages there that really, really stood out to me, and I'm just going to read it out loud here, is from Mark 6, 12 through 13, and it says, and they went out and they anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. I think that's very powerful because it uses the word anoint, and we're going to learn about anointing and what it means. But for me, just finding out how many times these oils are mentioned in the Bible and in what context was mind blowing for me. I had always heard oil in the Bible and always thought they were talking about olive oil. And then I'd heard of frankincense and myrrh, right? We've all heard that from the Christmas story, but that's all I knew. But tonight we're going to talk about all of these oils here, these nine that are all mentioned in scripture many times, um, not by their doTERRA name, right? But by their name of the tree or plant. We have elevation and frankincense and myrrh. We have cedarwood and spikenard and sandalwood, cinnamon bark, cassia, and cypress. And these oils are not your typical oils that you would start with. So let's say that you are brand new to oils in general and wanting to learn, you probably wouldn't put together a kit of just these oils, right? You would wanna start with some of the more um, basic. But I love this class because it gives us an idea of how many possibilities they are and where these oils come from and why uh, we should share them. So. Let's just do the natural thing and start in the beginning. One of the things I love about the Bible and the way that it's written and put together is that there are all these different themes and um, prophecies and things that are all woven together. So if you look at Genesis 1, 1 through 13, specifically verse 11, I'm going to pull that open and read it to you here real quick. I'm going to read verse 11. And it says, and God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. And so it talks about creation and how God spoke everything into being. Okay. And that's the beginning of the Old Testament. And it talks about these plants and these trees and how they were given to us as gifts from God. Now, if we jump to John 1, 1 through 5. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So we see in Genesis that God spoke everything to be into being. And then in John 1, we hear that again. And that's just a, a reminder to me that all the way through scripture, God is telling us how much he wants to bless us and all that he has for us. And I'm going to go off track just a little bit off of my script, as I'm often uh, likely to do, and just say that I had a little bit of a rough day today. We had some news that uh, about the house that we wanted to buy that was not ideal. But as I've been thinking about this class all day, I just have such a peace knowing that he created everything, including me, and his plans for me are so much better than mine. I am admitting somebody else. So the next passage I want to look at is in Ezekiel, and it's 47, 12.
And it says on the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fall, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. That sums it up right there. That nothing God does or has done is an accident. And when we talk a little bit about the oils moving forward and how they work in terms of actual science, it'll be another reminder of how amazing God is and his plans because he created us in just such a way that the oils would be effective for us. So the very first mention of essential oil in the Bible was from Genesis and it's the story of Joseph at the well. And if you don't know the story, that's okay. Joseph was at the well. His brothers were very jealous of him because he was favorite. So they threw him into a cistern and then they eventually traded him into slavery. But I'm sharing this story because they traded him for myrrh. That's how valuable it was. Okay. So that's just one example of what these oils meant to people so long ago that it's just hard to even wrap your mind around. So how much are the essential oils referenced in the Bible? And I promise we'll get to the oils, but I just wanted to pull out some of these uh, scriptures. Um, before we did that. And so one of the things that I wrote down that I was amazed by is that there are 66 books of the Bible and 46 of them reference essential oils very directly. So they're all throughout. There are over a thousand references to oils or to the healing plants and trees that they come from. The book um, that I read that you could borrow or check out um, if you're interested, is by Dr. David Stewart, and it's, again, Healing Oils of the Bible, and so that's where I was able to pull this information. It's not just frankincense and myrrh, right? It's mentioned all throughout scripture. One um, way that it's talked to about is through perfumes or incense. Now, remember how long ago this was and what they had and didn't have. They didn't have perfume of the type that we think about today, right? So when they're talking about this sweet fragrance and these perfumes that they use to anoint um, and make things holy, that's what they're talking about. So olive oil is in the Bible. It's mentioned a lot, but it's really interesting because it's mentioned as a carrier oil. And if you're new to oils, a carrier oil is just something that you blend with the oils to make sure that it a, soaks into your skin more so that you can get more of the benefit, but also if the oils are a little, what we call hot, they could cause irritation unless they're put with a carrier oil. And I'm going to show you an actual recipe from the Bible where the olive oil was used just as we do today as a carrier oil. But first, I want to talk about the most mentioned oils uh, and some that are my absolute favorite uh, in terms of how they work. Because in one of them, you, you've probably heard of or remember from studying oil of joy or the oil of gladness. It's the same thing, right? So in today's world, for me, the oil of gladness would be um, cheer, which is an oil, um, the elevation, um, just things that help your emotions to uh, rise to a new level and, and help you process things and just feel better. Um, but the way that that works is we were literally created so that our noses are wired differently than any of our other senses. When we smell something, because of the olfactory nerve and because of the way the oils are able to penetrate the blood-brain barrier, it accesses our limbic system. And our limbic system is where we keep our memories and the things that we've learned. And it's where our mood comes from. So God didn't just give us a bunch of trees and plants that would that would uh, make perfumes, he gave us healing oils that have what I like to call side benefits. So when you're learning about oils, you'll learn all these physical things that they help with, right? And for me, that's the most obvious. That's what people know about the most, um, that I was really sick and oils have really helped me physically. But I think sometimes I don't get the chance to share as much how much they have helped emotionally. And in the last few years, 
um, God has just been so, so present in my life through some hard things. Uh, and these oils, I kid you not, have been such a support and such a balm um, in, in the times when I needed them. So I just think that is awesome how we were created so that these, the aroma of these plants and trees not only can heal us physically, but can help the way we feel and the way we interact with others and the way we live. I just think that's amazing. All right. So the biblical meaning of the word anoint is massage, and I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but it sounds like our word massage, and that's quite literally what it was. Uh, I think the best definition I found that stood out to me that I liked the most was the laying on of hands in a loving way. So when they're using these oils in the Bible, and they're laying on hands, they're healing people in multiple ways, right? And they're applying these oils and they're anointing one another in an attitude of, pray of prayer. So I would just encourage when you're using your oils, if you use them during your meditation time or while you're doing Bible reading or any time that you're trying to take time to connect with God and what he wants to speak into your life, prayerfully use these oils. Um, and I can just tell you, you won't regret it. Um, it's an amazing experience. From here, it's Psalm 23, 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. And it's like I said earlier about my day today. I wouldn't have picked the news that we got right? But my cup still overflows. And that's not because of anything that I've done or that I'm special or that my faith is so strong. It's that God is that faithful. And he's shown me enough times that I'm learning to trust. And Margie and I talk about this a lot. It's God's timing, right? He could heal anything that's going on in our lives and he will in his timing, right? But these oils are such a great gift that he gives us along the way. So this is the recipe I was talking about, the sacred anointing oil. And it's mentioned in Exodus 30 in those few verses there. And it's also mentioned in Leviticus 8. Bear with me just a second while I turn my pages. In Leviticus 8, this passage is about the ordination of Aaron as the first high priest, okay? And he is anointed with oil at his ordination. Um, and so this picture here on the slide is an artist rendering of the tabernacle. And on the day that Aaron was anointed, God commanded that all of the um, altar, the basin, and everything at the um, tabernacle be anointed as well. And so that stands out to me because they were anointing it as a, a symbol, right? As a way to um, mark it as holy and set aside for God. But they were also using these oils on all their stuff, for lack of a better term, because they are so cleansing and antiseptic. So they were actually, um, you know, cleaning up with these oils, which I think is just so cool because we do that today. So this is what's in the holy anointing oil. And I want you to pay close attention to the amounts because this is a large amount of oil. It said pure myrrh, 500 shekels, which is over 13 pounds. Uh, sweet cinnamon, sweet calamus, cassia, and olive oil. Now look at olive oil compared to all of the other oils. Six quarts, it's the carrier oil because God commanded that these oils be applied and poured over the head. And when I say poured over the head, I don't mean dab, dab, you know, go on. We're talking literally running down the beard and the face and pooling on the floor. And we'll talk about that just a little bit more, but I just think it is so neat that the olive oil here 
in six quarts, the least amount of any of the oils, is what actually protected their skin from the cinnamon and the calamus and the, the hot oils. So when they talk about pouring out the anointing oil, like I just mentioned in Psalm 133, let me pull that up really quickly. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron and the collar of his robes. I'm going to skip ahead just a bit. For the Lord has commanded the blessing. So very directly there, it is talking about how they use the oil um, to anoint Aaron, like we talked about earlier. And then in the Christmas story, um, we're all familiar with the amazing gifts of frankincense and myrrh. But if you're like me, you probably heard that your entire life and never really wondered or knew what is that or, or why did they use that? You know, why is that mentioned? Um, and that's what we're going to kind of move ahead and learn a little bit about as we get into the oils. She had this slide and I just love it king size bed and you know I looked at that today and just thought what a humble beginning for the savior of the world I can live wherever he commands me to and I'll be okay <laughs> so that that was very powerful for me today so frankincense we call it the king of oils and we call it that for a reason because, and you're going to see these benefits, and some of you already know and use frankincense, and I will talk a little bit about um, how I use it today, but first let's kind of look at where frankincense comes from. So first of all, we have the trees, and they are, all of this is harvested by people for generations and generations. They know exactly what to do, and they do it, okay? They score the tree, actually cut it, and then these, what they call tears, that are like a resin, start to flow out. They almost remind me of um, like, like in a cave, so like tights. I could never remember which ones are on top and which ones are on bottom, but what a beautiful thing that God created this naturally and that the people there that harvest it um, know exactly what to do. And they didn't, they wouldn't have known unless they were led to do so. Um, let's see. So then they take the resins Okay, and then that's what they use to distill down and get the oil. It says, who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchant? And that's from Song of Solomon. So when you say perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, that's one of the, the things that um, these oils were, were known for, loved for, was their pleasing aroma. But that's not all. So here's what frankincense did for them in Bible times. It was valued more than gold during the ancient times. It's a symbol of divinity. It's used to anoint the newborn sons of kings and priests. It was used in worship and for medical treatment and worn as perfume. It was an anointing oil and they used it in the transition of death for embalming and perfume. So lots and lots of reasons that they were able to use and find the benefits in frankincense. Some of the things we know today and that I personally have experienced are that frankincense is immune boosting. It supports your respiratory system. It helps you to relax and helps balance the mood. It helps build a healthy immune system and it promotes your health on a cellular level. And for me, if I had to say my favorite use for frankincense, well, first of all, if I'm having a down moment and I just need God to remind me who I am and what's going on and just recenter myself, I will use frankincense because this smell just always grounds me and brings me back because I associate that with Jesus. Um, so that's just a personal, um, the, the whole way that it affects me. But I put two drops under my tongue every day because... Um, because of what I already mentioned, but also because 
with autoimmune disease, I get a lot of brain fog. Of course, my kids would probably just say it's what they like to call momnesia because I forget everything. So the brain fog truly does lift for me though when I use frankincense. And it's powerful enough that I'll go a few days, right? And I'm, I'm sure some of you can agree with this and I'll use it and it's great, but then you almost start to forget, right? I'm fine, I don't need to keep doing that. And then you realize it when you stop, like that was really helping me. Um, so I don't know, some of you have had that experience, I'm sure, um, that it's easy to say, oh, I'm good right now, but God knows what we need. All right, and myrrh, um, along the same lines, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. And we're gonna find out a little later what aloes were. Um, it's one of the oils that we use regularly, but that's what they called it. That's from Proverbs 7. So the gift of myrrh uh, in Bible times, it was a valuable commodity. It was imported from India and Arabia. It is part of the holy anointing oil. It was used for pregnant mothers in the prevention of disease. And then after childbirth to prevent and dissipate stretch marks. It was customarily used on the umbilical cords of newborns, which symbolically is meant to cut off generational curses. So that's just some interesting information there. But what does myrrh do for us today? Uh, it can soothe your skin, support your immune system. And I like to use it um, in meditation time. Um, to me, it's very um, balancing. Oh, it says here, promotes emotional balance and well-being. Um, soothing to the skin, promotes that smooth, youthful looking complexion. Hey, come on with it. I like that. <laughs> and then it has powerful cleansing properties, um, especially for the mouth, gums, and throat. So a lot of reasons to use myrrh. Um, and I had what I thought was going to be cellulitis a few months ago around my right eye. And that, that's one of the things I had a lot when I was struggling before I went to the Mayo Clinic. And we actually were headed toward the doctor and looked in the mirror almost at the doctor and realized that the issue was gone because I had used myrrh and it fixed the issue before we got to the hospital parking lot. So we just turned around and came back home. And that was a good surprise. All right, the next oil is cedarwood. And this one's a little more common today. Probably um, if you've been using oils for a while, you are familiar with cedarwood. But if not, just so you'll know some of these benefits that are amazing. It promotes clear breathing. It supports healthy respiratory function, clear, healthy skin, uh, great as an insect repellent. And it has the highest concentration of sesquiterpenes. I'm not gonna go into a lot of science because I don't know a lot about science, but I will tell you that that means that it is able to penetrate that blood brain barrier. And so that's where you're gonna get soothing that effect on your mind and your emotions, okay? And it helps to enhance awareness and it is also relaxing and calming. And I just made a lot of um, essential oil gifts uh, over the weekend um, some room sprays and different things and cedarwood is in almost all of them and it just brings something really special with that relaxing calming uh, earthy aroma that it has. So here we see the sandalwood and aloes so whenever they talked about aloes in the bible they're actually talking about sandalwood. Um, it has a wide variety of applications as it says here skin um, it reduces the appearance of scars and blemishes it's another mood enhancer and it is very uplifting. It says here, calming, grounding, and uplifting. And I think that's such a powerful combination because we want to be calmed down and we want to be able to focus, but we also want to be able to, to take action. And so these oils really have helped me to, to do that, both emotionally and physically. All right. And then spikenard. And if you see it in the Bible, they usually abbreviate it and just say nard. And that is what they're talking about. All right, so the Holy Week anointings. Just something I wanted to point out. The first four books of the New Testament, the gospel, every single one, all four, talk about the Holy Week anointing. And they talk about the oils and they talk about how Jesus was anointed and how 
they were used. And so to me, if something is right there, um, that's not by accident. That's a definite signal to us that this is important, that this is a gift for us from him. Just one second. I wrote notes and sometimes I just forget to use them and I don't wanna miss anything important. Yeah, so Matthew 26, six through 13. Okay, I'm actually gonna read that one. All right. It says, now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask, a very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant saying, why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. You always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, who, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And so there was some irony there where she was being criticized for using this great gift that she had um, and was told that it was wasteful because she used it for Jesus. And that story has always stuck out to me, but especially, um, it's just especially has a new meaning for me since I know about the oils and since I can read that into it. Um, and I just think that's beautiful um, when it talks about the preparing him for burial. And they had no idea what he meant, right? But we do because we know the ending. All right. And the next two oils are together here, cinnamon and cassia. These oils are extremely antiseptic. That's why they are used in our blends like On Guard um, that help with the immune system. They're very hot oils, so they need to be used with a carrier oil. Um, but they have this warming, uplifting aroma. They just smell good. Um, I think my favorite candle that I made with the oils um, was called Spiced Vanilla. And it's vanilla, but it's got that cinnamon oil and it just smells so good. Again, like I said, builds the uh, immune system, can help promote healthy digestion. So also in the blends that, that we have that focus on that. Um, and it is, like I said, the, among the most antiseptic of the essential oils. So it's kind of the, um, the key to the on guard line is that cinnamon and cassia smell. And it's, it's hard to beat, especially at Christmas time. And then we have cypress. And cypress is distilled from the twigs and foliage of the cypress tree. Um, it's used a lot today in spas and for therapeutic uses. Um, you can use it as a throat gargle or to assist in breathing. Um, it soothes tight, tense muscles and supports localized blood flow. And um, cypress is one that I think it's so cool the way it was created because cypress trees are super tall, right? One of the things I learned as I was studying this is that they are just as tall underground. They go down just as far as they go up above the ground. Their root system just goes on forever. And I just, when I think about creation, when I think about the things God has done, who thinks of that? I mean, we certainly wouldn't, but he just has so much for us that if we just open our eyes and look around, it's everywhere. And especially this time of year, um, I, I liked learning about Cyprus because that just shows me how awesome God is as creator. And then back to what I mentioned earlier. So it says, Lord, teach us to pray. And so I do want to just, again, encourage you, if you are using oils or if you want to start using oils, it's such a beautiful experience to use them with an attitude of prayer. Because if we believe that they are truly gifts from God, then we need to show that gratitude, right? And that way, we're praying not for what we want, 
but for his will in our lives. And just the fact that the oils can be a part of that is very beautiful to me. So we've got Revel Revelation 22, one through three. And if you remember when we first started talking or when I first started talking, I said in the beginning, okay? So we were at the beginning and now we're going to the end. And this is what I mentioned earlier about how beautiful it is when truth is woven through scripture and it just keeps coming up, these same references. So Revelation 22, one through three. said, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. So in the beginning, God created everything into being. And in the very end, it still reminds us that he gave us these gifts for the healing of the nations. I just thought that parallel from beginning to end was so, so cool. And then in James 5, 13 through 16. Okay. It says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And that, it's hard for me to even read that passage without becoming tearful or getting choked up because I was so, so sick for such a long period of time. And it was really scary. And to be honest, I really didn't foresee there would be a time in my life when I didn't feel that way. It just felt kind of hopeless. And I had kind of given up in some ways and it was reflected in different, you know, parts of my life. And one of the things, and I know Margie won't mind if I mention this, is that when we did meet to get the oils that first day, um, which they had a profound impact right from the start, by the way. And that's why I just kept going. But she mentioned that when she got home, her husband, who I also, you know, have known from having her kids in school, you know, asked about me. And she said that, to be honest, I wasn't like me. It was like, it was like I wasn't really alive, fully alive. Um, I was shattered. That's really the only word I can think of to describe it. And through people in my life and through various blessings and through these oils and not just the little bottles of oils, but everything that is encompassed there with um, being able to share that and have friendship among, you know, the ladies that share oils with me too. Um, he's just given me so much more than I could have ever asked or imagined. Um, and that is just a reminder that we get our hearts set on things of this world and we really want them. And God wants that for us. He wants us to have joy and happiness, but he also knows the whole story. And so I know, and not to just harp on my personal situation, but if God intended for us to be in that house, we would be right. And so all I can do, and I'm better at it some days than others is trust and remember that passage that says, Lord, teach us to pray, because once I give it to him, I'm okay. As a matter of fact, I talked to someone last night and then talked to them again today. It was a person that, that was working on our loan um, that I had a couple of questions for. And he said, well, you're in a much better mood today. And I said, well, that's because I've had some time to talk to God before I talk to you again. <laughs> he really laughed at that, but he understood what I meant. And this is the bibliography. Okay, so the only reason I share that is so that you know how much research that uh, Karina Carey put into this class. And I'm so, so, so appreciative of that. 
and absolutely have loved studying it and learning about it. And so as we move forward to kind of wrap up for tonight, oh, I thought I had one more slide there. Maybe I missed getting it on there. Okay. Well, goodness. All right, I'm gonna stop my share so I can come back and see everybody's lovely faces. I thought I added the graphic on the end, but I must have saved it to the wrong file, which I do all the time. Um, you would think I wouldn't since I do this for a living, but it happens. But all it was going to show you was a very beautiful design that Trisha had put together to let you know that our next class is more of the traditional, um, you know, new year, new you, how to use these oils or I've I've ordered oils or I've decided to enroll, but I'm not sure what to do with them. It's that class. And that is going to be January 11th at 730. And it will be taught by all of us. So you don't have to listen to me the whole time. Um, but we would love to have you there and to continue being able to share what these oils have done in our lives and the lives of lots and lots of other people that we know and have been able to share them with. So just that last point that I really wanna drive home is that these oils are a true gift from God. And I would encourage you as you use them to look at those emotional uh, benefits they have and let God work in your life in that way um, because it's amazing. It's been an absolutely amazing journey. Does anybody have anything they want to add before we wrap up, Trisha or Margie? Everybody good? Okay. So what I would like everyone to do or to ask um, is that you get with whoever invited you to the class um, so that we can talk to you about what oils can do for you. Um, one of the ways we do that is just by a real simple question is what three health concerns do you have that you would really like to see addressed? And I only mention that because that's how I started. And so when Margie gave me oils for the first time, it was adaptive, which if you listen to me very often talk about oils, adaptive is my jam. I love it. I would pour it on everyone I've ever met if I could, and mostly myself. And someone just asked me at work this week, um, what's the scent you have in your office all the time? And I said, it's adaptive. It's called calm in a bottle. That's what I call it. Um, and so we tackled that anxiety and I was able to go off of the script and we tackled the digestive stuff with digest in. And so I say all of that just to let you know that when we say, what are your top three health concerns? Because we can help you with them. I'm confident that we really can. And so I would encourage you to share those and, um, and give the oils a try if you haven't. And if you have to, to try to branch out, maybe try some new things and try them with an attitude of prayer. So if you don't mind, I'd like to close us in prayer. And then just um, reach out to the person that invited you, or we will check with you and make sure um, it, whether you have any questions or any way we can help you out. And then don't forget that next class, January 11th at 730. All right, I'm going to pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the gift of these oils and what they've made, um, the difference they've made in our individual lives. I've shared tonight, Lord, um, personally, but I know that there are more in the group who've had just as many blessings um, from the oils as I have. And I just thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to learn more about you, draw closer to you, and share you and these healing oils with others. We pray that as we go through the Christmas season that we will remember that you are the gift and that eternal life with you is the gift and everything else is just icing on the cake. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Great class. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. I think Trisha's gone, isn't she? Yeah. Okay. Who's, is this Denise? 
Thanks. Good night. Night, Mama. Good night. <laughs> Here's. Here's what I've been holding. I know I wanted to see. I was hoping you would do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cute. We'll talk to you. Check out those cheeks. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I am so proud of you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. I mean, I, yeah, I set you up pretty good that you are a natural teacher, but yes, you are. And I just can't thank you enough for sharing all of that. And I mean, I, I know it's natural to give me the credit because I'm the one that handed them to you, but it's not me. And you know that, and I know you know that, but I'm just so blessed that you chose me to be part of your journey. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and you know, today, before I even was letting you know, um, hold on a second, let me stop the recording. Oh, yeah. <laughs>